Hi everyone, I'm Catherine, the artist behind Bigelow Fine Arts. How did yesterday go with some of the compass face details? Let me know below, I'd love to know. Today I'm going to continue working up more of the elements on the face of the compass as well as the outer bezel. Check out the playlist if you want to follow along from the beginning. Otherwise, I've got some pencils sharpened and I'm ready to get started on this page. Join in and color along with me. The metal part of the compass was supposed to be coppery or bronze in color, but that was thrown out the window in the first video. So I again drew inspiration from Julie's passion for coloring, where she used warm gray around the metal bezel and top. I liked the idea since my bronze and coppery idea was now shot. I went in with cold gray instead. I felt it would better match the blue steel look of the metal needle. I worked up the knob with the shadows on the edges and the highlight close to the center. Working on the top knob, I began with cold gray 5 to place my shadows. I figured the light would be in the upper right corner and set up a light spot on that side of the ring. I also have a highlight on the opposite side, which, looking back on it, I'm not sure if that would be accurate or not, but it looks good. Shadows blocked in, I used the cold gray 3 to lighten the part between the shadow and the highlight. I did the same with the knob. I put some gray 3 beside the gray 5 and blended them together. This little knob and ring are a great little practice run before having to tackle the entire bezel. And to further avoid tackling the large bezel, I instead tackled the remainder of the parts on the compass face. I worked up the dashes in a gradient, and looking at how well it turned out, I kind of wish I had worked up the brown part in a gradient as well. I laid in the cold gray first, covering up about a third of the dash going heavy to light with the layers of pigment before coming in with the cold gray 3 for another third, again layering the pigment heavier to lighter. Then I used the cold gray one for the final third and used that to blend everything together.
For the other half of the compass rose triangles, I laid the cold gray five along the edges of the triangle, followed by the cold gray three, just in from that, and filled in the center with the cold gray one. That finishes up the compass face, leaving just the bezel and leafed branch for this half. Going back to the bezel, I felt that the outer ring of the bezel angles away from the compass face while the inner ring angled into the compass face. Taking those physical settings in my head and the position of the light coming from the upper right, I felt that the outer edge closest to the upper right would be a highlight, while the inner edge furthest away from the light would also be a highlight. With that set in my head, I began laying in the shadows as best I could, beginning with the cold gray five on the inner ring closest to the light and the outer ring furthest from the light while also trying to stay within the viewfinder of the camera. I did go off camera a couple of times. It was just so easy to keep going around the circle of the bezel. This did take a bit of time to fill in because I didn't want to press too hard on the paper, but I did want to get it covered. I also had to make sure that when I left off with one color, I didn't have a sharp line of color, but a smooth gradient.
The last element left to complete is the center branch with leaves. I really wasn't sure how to color this in. I feel a theme happening where I just wasn't exactly prepared for the little things on this page, but rather only had a larger overview of what I wanted. Sure, I'll do the four seasons around the outside, and how about a bronze color for the metal? But yeah, I didn't think about the leaves or rose very well. I feel like I chose poorly when I decided that the compass rose should have solid brown points, leaving me stuck with not being able to use brown for the branch. I decided to make it look like a fresh green branch with a touch of brown. I began with the May green, putting down a light layer to cover. I then added a light layer of raw umber to give it a brown tint, and it does give it the illusion of being a young branch. Not bright green, but not brown either. The leaves I colored the same as the two-tone leaves above. I used a layer of grass green, followed by half the leaf getting the permanent green to give it more depth and variation. I'm going to stop here for today, since that pretty much finished up the top half of the compass. Tomorrow I will start the bottom half of the compass, which will feel a little like a repeat of Monday's video. I hope you've been following along and enjoying the new format. Let me know below. I'd love to see how your compass is coming along. I have my social media links below. Find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon. If you have any questions or page requests, please leave them below or reach out to me on social media. I put in a list of chapter breaks in the show notes, as well as a list of equipment I like to use. If you use any of the affiliate links, it really helps me out without costing you a thing. I want to thank you all so much for coming along and joining in with me on this coloring journey. I appreciate all my new subscribers, as well as my existing subscribers, and hope to really build a coloring community here. I look forward to more of you joining in and coloring along with me. That will only happen if you like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, happy coloring!